Hi, and welcome to our review of Google Search Education's first lesson, Picking the Right Search Terms. Before we move on to any of our secondary lessons, it would be a good idea for us to take a moment to review what we learned in our first lesson. And before I begin, I'm actually going to suggest you make sure you have the worksheet open that accompanies both lesson one and lesson two. Which worksheet? Well, if you actually go and take a look in your email, you probably received a link from your teacher letting you know that there's a Google Education worksheet that you have edit rights to. It looks just like this one. In fact, this one is our template. If you didn't get the email, well, you can also go to our class blog and find it in this blog post. It's actually right here. There's a link right to the template. But the better way to get it is actually through your email because it's already been created and named for you. That's the best copy to get. Don't have the worksheet open? Check your email, open it up, and then come back. Probably would be a good idea to pause this. Don't worry, I'll be here when you're, when you're ready. Go ahead, pause it. I'll be here. So, glad to see you got your worksheet open. Let's go ahead and get started. If you can remember from our last class, we started by asking two questions. How can I figure out the right search terms to develop a query? And how are my search terms interpreted to gather information for me? Well, these two questions led us to find out some interesting information. Individual search terms become queries when we group them together to perform a search. Sometimes those queries might take the form of a question, complete with a question for punctuation, and other times we might actually parse those questions to provide more appropriate keywords for a better targeted query. Just remember, individual words are search terms. We put them together to create queries. If you could remember from our last class, we actually had a query that we used. It was this, what food does Tyson like best? If you can remember, we're really trying to find out information about Tyson, a character from a Percy Jackson book. But when we typed this into Google, well, we got one of the results we wanted, but the rest of the results had to do with Tyson chicken. Absolutely nothing of what we really wanted. The reason was, this wasn't actually the best targeted search. It wasn't the best possible query we could have done. We actually learned a little bit about how Google works from our good friend, Matt Cutts. If you remember, Google doesn't actually search the web. It searches an index that it makes of the web by sending out spiders to archive websites by following the links to other websites. I know, it sounds confusing, but just remember, Google's index search of its own website archives takes just about half a second to return potentially millions of results for us. Each of those results ranked according to some internal mechanisms and algorithms that they use. Just know that when they give you back your search, it's usually pretty targeted already. We can definitely make it better. The way we do that is by parsing our questions. To parse means to look at something, to change it, to modify it. And that's what we're gonna do as a review for what we did in our last lesson. Remember, there are really four great steps to parse any question that you have to make it a better targeted search. The first thing that we need to do is, can you remember? That's right. We need to look for keywords. In this particular sentence, what food does Tyson like best? The keywords we're hoping to, to pull out are food, Tyson, and like best. And if you can remember step two, it meant that sometimes certain concepts or maybe it means this, maybe it means that terms might actually be better replaced using synonyms. So instead of using the term or concept like best, we're going to use the word synonyms. Unfortunately, when Google does a search, like and best might not even end up anywhere near each other. And so instead of using two words that mean one thing, we're going to use one word. And in this case, it's favorite. Step three for parsing is to ensure that if there's any missing information, we add it in. So in this case, to make a more targeted, specific search, because we're looking for a very specific Tyson, 
we're going to make sure that we add in the information, the missing information, Percy Jackson. And our final step to parse a question and to get it right down to what it needs to be is we're going to, if you guessed it, remove unnecessary words. And in this case, we got rid of the word what, we got rid of the word does, and we got rid of the question mark. Remember, we don't need the question mark anymore because, well, we're not asking a question. We're adding a query. So, in the end, our query is going to include these five words. The keywords food, Tyson, favorite, Percy, and Jackson. And by doing a search with these keywords, we're going to get a much better targeted search. Now let's take a look and see what we've got. By doing a query with these particular five words, it looks like the top three and possibly four, five, six, each of these has information here that's more targeted and better related to the content that we are looking for. I think that's a pretty not darn neat thing. Now, your job is to actually go back to that awesome worksheet that we created and fill in some information. If you take a look at your worksheet, you'll notice, well, I left out some information here. Do you remember what we call these different steps? Take a look over on the, on the side of the example, and you'll probably be able to figure out what these four items are. Once you've plugged those in, I'd like you to actually go through the process of going and looking at these particular questions and parsing them down to create a better query. Don't forget to take each of these questions and pass it through each of these four parsing steps to come up with a final query. And eventually, we're going to ask this last question down at the bottom and see what we get. So, I want you to go ahead and pause the video. You're going to take about three, four, five minutes max. And I want you to go ahead and finish out these statements and then parse each of these questions in this table in the space provided for you. Okay. So, now's a great time to go ahead and pause your video. Again, I'll be here when you get back. Trust me. So, how successful were you? Were you able to parse all three of those questions in exercise A of your worksheet? I hope so. My favorite one is that third one. See, that third one, if you parse it just right, should return with information about Drawbridge, California. And if you actually do a search for Drawbridge, California, you can take a look at the Wikipedia entry, or even better yet, take a look at Google Maps. Let's check out this awesome Google Maps search for Drawbridge, California. You'll notice it's actually not that far away from, say, like San Francisco, or maybe, you know, Cupertino. That's the headquarters of Apple, by the way. If I were to scroll in and take a look over here at Drawbridge and actually get really close, you'd be able to see some of the abandoned buildings. Isn't Google Maps neat? I love it. See, the reason it's called Drawbridge is, well, they used to have these drawbridges right over the, uh, the water that would lift up and lift down so that boats could get through. But, well, not a lot of boats going through there anymore. Actually, I'm not going to get into the real details about what happened to it. If you want to find out more, go do a search for it. Read the Wikipedia article. Anyways, now that we've gone through the process of doing a pretty good query based off of a question that we parsed, it's time for us to move on to the next thing, Lesson 2. Lesson 2 is going to help us figure out what do we do with all those search result returns we get. Sorting through that can sometimes take a while. So, you ready? Let's go ahead and move on to number two. Oh, yeah, and by the way, you can still use the same worksheet. If you were to switch back to the worksheet, you notice ah, lesson two starts right here. So as long as you've got that worksheet open and you're ready, you can go ahead and get started with the second video.